are actually making a recommendation to carry over um, back into outcome one, and again, you'll, you'll see that note. So the, the gist here is these, um, unless there's something that really comes up this, this afternoon that you want one of these to stick somewhere, these aren't gonna carry forward after, after your objectives conversation. Well, we will continue to provide them to you, but I would certainly think about, is there something on this list that you don't see elsewhere in the objectives that you really think should be in the plan? Because once you finish the objective conversation, in some ways, the, these fall off. Uh, the second set here is, is a different situation. Um, so after that gray bar, um, we went through a process of looking at every single um, one of those 168 objectives and asked us, a, a, you know, asked a real question based on uh, the, strategic, the strategic planning model. Does this really operate like an objective or is this something that's more like an initiative? Um, and so that's really where we got most of the trimming. And so all of these are still alive and they were all things that you will ultimately talk about when you get to that initiative part um, of the conversation, but they're just here so that you know that they have not been um, lost. Um, let's see if there's, so, so, so to give you an example, um, going back up to attachment two, which we'll primarily use um, this evening. So the first one, you know, right now we're standing at four regional objectives that are coming to you with a staff recommendation this, e this afternoon. Obviously, you'll talk about it. But there were other um, things that were reclassified as an, as an initiative. So there used to be an objective called promote com compact and mixed-use development patterns. That felt more like an initiative. So we just sort of slid that over. And again, those will be talked about um, uh, at, a later, at a later date. And then the only other thing that I can do, that I can think to do that sort of catches you up in terms of what's different now from the uh, previous draft that you may have uh, may have seen um, is uh, objective 4.3 um, and attachment two. Uh, the draft had probably five or six objectives uh, that were really focused on transit. That that when you read them closely, they felt like very slight variations of the same statement. Uh, so we just tried to create a catch-all objective there, and so that's now regional objective 4.3. So that's kind of the making of the sausage in terms of how it got to you today to go from 168 um, regional objectives to hopefully 51, which to, to us seems like a much more uh, manageable number. So that really concludes uh, my overview. Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, before we start discussion amongst the board, I want to give the opportunity for anybody uh, in the public that would like to comment on a specific area or specific item uh, on the um, staff recommended objection objectives if you've read them if you have specific comments now is the opportunity if you would obviously identify yourself and you'll have three minutes Good afternoon, committee members. Uh, my name is Ted Hyde. I'm the policy director for Bicycle Colorado. And uh, thank you all for your continued good work on the document here. Uh, just a couple of really minor comments. So in what would be your attachment to, I'm looking at the footer page number. It's 13. Uh, this would be under outcome four. So regional objective 4.1 as stated is improved safety and reliability of multimodal roadway system. I'd recommend that that be changed to multimodal transportation system to be more in step with the actual outcome at left. So instead of multimodal roadway system, multimodal transportation system. Two pages later, page 15, outcome 10, Um, again, because I think this is more in step with the outcome, please consider changing regional objective 10.1 to increase active transportation options that are safe and convenient for all ages and abilities. Again, that's increased trans act, excuse me, increase active transportation options that are safe and convenient for all ages and abilities. Great. Thanks for considering us. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. Any other public comment before we move forward with board discussion? 
Seeing none, we will move on to board discussion. And um, I'm not going to read all of these, but I'm going to ask that we take them, you know, one uh, board approved outcome at a time, of course. And uh, I'd like to take them in order. So if, if you have comment on 1.1, uh, let's do that, then 1.2, 1.3, and we'll just kind of move through it and get through all 51 in the next 42 minutes <laughs> or something like that. Uh, Councilmember Sonanic. Yes, just a, um, a high-level question, Brad, uh, to help my discomforted mind uh, on this, which is um, you, you talked about uh, taking activities and, and moving them out. Uh, when I look at all the objective statements, they have an, an active verb that's at the beginning. And just if you could explain how an active verb with an objective that sounds like an endpoint as opposed to an action item um, and get me comfortable with that. Um, I don't know if anyone else was bothered, but. Yeah, so and that's probably a good point. Um, just I can't remember what the memo, if the memo um, defines this, but we in our strategic planning model, we think of objectives as continuous improvement activities that ultimately support the outcome, right? The easiest way that I think about it is if you're, if you're headed in the direction that's sort of pointed to in the outcome, you're, you're always making process, progress. That, that's a good thing. Uh, versus the initiatives that felt like very discrete sort of items that, 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 that don't feel the same way. And, and frankly, there was a, there was a lot in that um, evaluation process that was, is this regional or is this really local? Um, you know, com you know, pr promote compact community development patterns. Sure, we do that um, at the at the regional level, but that is in, in many ways very much sort of a, a local action and initiative. So that was the other thing that we use in terms of our our filter to try to make um, those evaluative um, uh, decisions. Does that, does that help? Okay. All right, specifically, are there comments, questions, or recommendations for Objective 1.1? Uh, Commissioner Jones. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Malay. Thank you. I am, I am, and this is not just about 1.1, somewhat uncomfortable with some of the verbs. When we talk about, you know, distinguishing, promote, and strengthen. I don't know really what the difference between those words means. So when we, I'm just wondering if we should have a consistent set of verbs that describe, if we're, aren't we going to be promoting the unique characteristic of the region's communities versus embracing them? I mean, I guess I, 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 I'm confused. We, we talk about prioritization of funding and priori prioritization of investment, and then we talk about investing in. and. Um, all with different objectives. And so I guess to me, to have these real clear objectives, uh, we do want development patterns and community design features that meet the needs of all ages, incomes, and, and abilities. That to me is the objective. Um, and it was kind of along the lines of the question Phil raised. Um, you know, so that's, my, that's what I'm struggling with, guys. So I, I guess to me, I would like consistent language. I don't know if we decide on the, the, a couple of verbs that we use um, or not. So that, just throwing it out there. Commissioner Jones. Um, I, I wasn't going to speak to that, but I could. I guess, uh, I, well, um, this is also a document that needs to be readable and so I don't know that we need to use the same verb every time, but let's use the right verbs. I think there's several different words that you can use that are roughly the same thing, and I don't have a problem with that. Um, but if there's confusion over what a verb means, then we should focus on the one. But just for readability, if every objective starts with promote, I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't aspire to that. I also, but, but I had a separate comment, which is th to ask the chair's pleasure on um, how we move through this. Would you, this is the last MVIC meeting that's not a work session. Typically, MVIC approve, uh, makes recommendations to the board. So presumably, we, depending on how far we get, we would be doing that. If, uh, would you like that to happen objective by objective, or 
outcome by outcome or at the end of the meeting or what kind of process do you see following? Yeah, obviously it is a little bit of a challenge because we are going to have a little different uh, board the next time we take up this issue wherever we leave off today. Uh, the makeup of it will probably be larger and it'll be a work session rather than an MVIC meeting. Um, so to I guess one point of your question, I would say that we do need to have a clear demarcation of where we end that we complete an outcome and all the uh, objectives that we're gonna recommend to the full board for each outcome. We're not gonna stop in the middle of an outcome. Is that part of your question? Um, yeah, but so we're, if nobody has any changes to outcome, the objectives under outcome one, we could make a motion at the end of that and move it forward and right. check it off as we go. Or at the end of the meeting, we could make a single motion. And I was asking how you wanted to lead the meeting so that I could be helpful in that regard. No, actually, that is a good point. And I think what I would prefer is to have a motion on the outcome as we uh, complete each outcome so that, so that we do have that clear demarcation. Uh, Serge. I basically, I wanted to um, agree with Commissioner Jones that um, if a verb <clears throat> is confusing, that certainly needs to be addressed. But having a diversity of verbs makes the, the, li the document more readable, and, and it is to some extent a living document. It's for people, you know, to read and understand and move forward on. So. I would support that idea, is all I was going to say. Mayor Pro Tem Malay. And, and I'm fine that, with that too, but again, I need to understand the difference between the verbs, and that's what I'm struggling with. I, 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 not the readability of it, but what, what is the difference between promote and encourage? To me, having both of them in there and making it a readable document means it should be understandable too. So I, I mean, and with that, I would actually suggest that we change promote development to encourage development patterns and community design features that meet the needs. And that would be a motion. Second. So let me understand, you want to change that verb in all cases no, to? No, no, we're just taking one at a time and okay. with the exact, to, to the point of, of the commissioner and council member um, Graves, uh, Sarah Graves, but it, I don't want to blanketly change, but to me we should be encouraging development patterns, not promoting them. I, so, and so staying within uh, outcome one, are you also suggesting that same change for 1.3? I, my motion was to change the word promote in objective 1.1 1 .1 to okay. encourage. Right. That was the motion. So there's a motion in the second on 1.1 1 .1 to change it from pr promote to encourage. All, the, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Uh, okay. Sorry. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries, so it will be encourage rather than promote on 1.1 1 .1, other concerns issues councilmember brookett um yes i don't know what the role of uh, uh copy editing here is for us but i did notice that the word income is capitalized and it probably shouldn't be i don't know if that requires a motion but um the third to the last word in 1.1 1. 1. yeah that'll be just a edit edit, edit change Commissioner um, Jones. I'm not seeing other, any other object, uh, um, concerns, so I was going to make a motion that we approve all four objections under outcome one, including obviously the amendment that was just made. Mayor Pro Temele. You guys don't get tired of my voice tonight, I apologize, but I do have concerns with uh, some of the objectives. Um, it, it, so, all right, well, I thought we were going through them one at a time. Yeah. I thought we were <laughs> on to 1.2. Yeah. So I thought that was, it, that, that would be, and we can maybe move quickly through them, Elise, but I think we should, these are important words. Okay. Oh, no. God, you know me better than Objective that. Objective 1.2. <laughs> I, 
Someone needs to, sorry. Mayor Pro Tem uh, What does embrace the unique characteristics of each the region's communities mean? I, uh, that, that, that's a beautiful statement. I don't know what it means. Are we hugging? Yeah. <laughs> no, it is a beautiful statement. So what does it mean? And I'm, I'm not going to be annoying through the whole document, I promise. But some of these are just a little out there, touchy-feely for me. I'm an engineer. You guys know it. I need to know what that means. So you guys can help me. Council Member Stoltzman. I'm not sold on the verb or the language in Objective 1.2, but I think it's an important objective that's trying to talk about the diversity of the communities. So when you look at the outcome, it says the region is comprised of diverse, livable communities. So I think it's trying to say that we value that our communities are not all exactly the same. And so that's how I read this. I'm okay with how it's worded. I'm okay with rewording it, but I think it's important to leave it in there in some right. fashion. I, I agree. Councilmember Cernanek. Getting back to our... Um, or uh, just revisiting the uh, continuous improvement components. Um, the em embrace, uh, as uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Malay has said, um, to me has, I'm not sure what direction or continuous improvement activity is incorporated into that embrace other than it's, yeah, thank you. Um, other than it's, it's almost a state of being uh, uh, to some extent. And I appreciate that. We want to say there is an importance uh, of diversity that we're not going to be imposing a cookie cutter approach uh, on our communities. And so I understand some of that, but I, going back to what we were trying to, to get at with the continuous improvement elements on the objectives, I'm, I, I'm a little baffled, I suppose, on this one. So I'll, I have the same question Jackie does. Council Member Diet. All right. Um, so with uh, with in, with embrace, um, I, I think this to me as as I've learned this uh, strategic uh, plan method, um, the objective is usually held by the staff, which then usually has the performance measure. And I know we're not there yet, but to me, I guess my looking into the future is is there some kind of thought as to how you measure the embracement of a unique characteristic of the region's communities, because that might give us some perspective with each verb. Or am I just front running too much? Is, is there a suggestion of a change of word or a way that we can change the, this phrase that would give a higher comfort level? Commissioner Partridge. I was thinking of using, suggesting, understand there are unique characteristics of the region's communities. Mayor Pro Tem How about value? <clears throat> value? Ongoing, imp can we continue? I mean, I don't know that it, uh, no, that does not, <laughs> that does recognize. not. Recognize, ooh, I like recognize. Commissioner Jones. Preserve. You almost said celebrate, and I kind of like that. I just want to remind us a couple of things. One is so that we don't get too bogged down. This is the aspirational vision for our region, and that's why some of the words that we're using are aspirational, and only a handful will be, hopefully, foundational measures. So we should get the right words, but we should also recognize we're not proposing at the end to measure each piece of this. So I just wanted to caution us before we. I'd like to make a motion to change to real regional objective 1.2, preserve the unique characteristics of the region's communities. Mr. Graves. Perhaps a friendly, because I've been noodling this for a bit. So first, some context. I've been thinking a lot, actually, about special districts. It doesn't sound necessarily like it, it relates, but often when you're trying to create a, a business improvement district or some special uh, cultural district, you're trying to tune into these characteristics that we're trying to identify here. So here's some language that I would suggest. Perhaps we could do something like preserve and leverage the unique historic, cultural, and geographic characteristics of the region's communities for future development. John is having a headache. John says no. No, no, no. no. I'm unrelated. Okay. Was that because so, so it was a friendly amendment? So can I, can I 
Can I respond? Well, let's, let's ask Mr. Graves to repeat it first. Okay. And I, I'm happy to wordsmith to do something much shorter, but I think I understand the intent of what we're trying to get here. I suggested something like, something like preserve and leverage the unique historic, cultural, and geographic characteristics of the region's community, communities for future development. So, so, uh, so my, so it was something like that, and it was a friendly amendment. So I, I, I would, I would accept. I think that's what I do. Preserve and leverage the unique characteristics of the re region's communities, and we don't have to identify the unique characteristics. We can just because there's a lot of different ones. We're not because that's already there. I mean, that's that's what makes. Me unique. So that's my motion. So so let me just um, channel Jerry for a moment. Just have Jerry come up here. Yeah. And, uh, and please do. But I, what partly what I think he's going to tell us is or or encourage us to think about is how much time we're going to spend changing the word happy to glad. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, I hear you. That's what I said. I'm not going to do it on every one, I promise. I, uh, actually, I wasn't going to mention that <laughs> because I think you already figured that out. <laughs> so here's what I will tell you about the verb. And I must tell you, you will get tired of the limited number because the verbs are designed to tell you which direction is good. When you, when you get, you can use a verb like strengthen and promote, but you've got to define it in the narrative. You'll have to define what that verb means. So here's why you run out of verbs. Because if we look at, I'll give you one that I would throw in for, as I mentioned, preserve, uh, improve development patterns in community design, period. That's an objective. The rest of that is narrative content. So if you, you know, I know you want all this stuff in the objective, but where it really belongs is the objective needs to be real crisp and clear, and the narrative will support all the components that you're writing into it currently. But just think about the verb determining which direction is good, reduce, increase, improve, those kinds of words. And then when we get the words like optimize, because we run out of verbs, we have to define what that verb means in the narrative so we can measure it. To the point John made. So I have to say you went back to 1.1 1 .1, we're past that. Oh I'm sorry yeah I was just <laughs> using an example you know that's it but you're right you're past that. So so, so let me ask uh, Mayor Pro Tembele to restate her, her uh, motion please. My motion is to change the language in the regional objective 1.2 to preserve and leverage the unique characteristics of the region's communities. I think it's been Sir. seconded. Okay. I would like to second it and speak in favor of it. I think it, it, it's a little more precise and action-oriented. Good combination of Jackie and Anthony works better than embrace. Other comments on 1.2? 1 1.3. 1 Wait, do we need to vote? Excuse me. Yes, I'm sorry. So there's a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? abstentions. Thank you. 1.3. Oh my god, you guys are Mayor Pro Tembele. <laughs> I want to combine 1.3 and 1.4. I think 1.4 strengthen the vitality and self-sufficiency of existing communities. I think all of the communities should be doing that. I don't think one community should be called out any differently. I think we address the uniqueness of our communities already up uh, above. So I, I think promote investment and reinvestment in existing communities or strengthen the vitality and self-sufficiency of existing communities, but not both. Comments? Commissioner Jones. Um, I, I am fine with that. I would say if I had to choose between the two, promote investment and reinvestment. It's an idea of focusing resources to places that are already developed and enhancing them as opposed to st starting new. Makes sense. Mayor Pro Tem mm. So I move that we um, adopt uh, objective 1.3 um, and uh, delete objective 1.4 as proposed. Second. Have a motion and a second to Adopt 1.3 as it's written and uh, delete 1.4. Discussion? 
I just wonder if the staff could comment on the note on the side that says staff recommends retaining. So this, uh, this is uh, related to objective 1.4, which is what I mentioned previously. Um, there was an outcome that, that MVIC recommended removing um, that was re related to freestanding communities and rural town centers. We have a series of 13 or so rural town centers that have been recognized in MetroVision from the very beginning of the, of the plan. Um, places, you know, Netherland is a, is a really good example. Um, your conversation to remove that outcome really focused on this notion of freestanding communities. I um, mean, you, you didn't really spend a lot of time talking about rural town centers, and we we received feedback from at least one jurisdiction after the fact that they really thought the rural town centers piece was important and should be called out in some way, and we just wanted to reflect um, that that input. Though, though I, I agree in some ways they are saying in many ways the same thing, and then one is sort of pointing to a very specific um, geography that, that is unique in our region, but if you feel like the catch-all in 1.3 works, then we're probably good. Uh, Council Member Karis Graves. I just want to ask um, for a little bit of elaboration on the loss of the word self-sufficiency for, I, I, I agree that we should be investing and reinvesting in all existing communities regardless of size, but I'm, I'm wondering about the term self-sufficiency being lost in relationship to a smaller size town or community. Um, I, as staff, I mean, it's in some ways that's why that, that word was in there from particularly the rural town center's perspective. Um, you know, the way that the MetroVision has been oriented is that, is that these places not only serve um, their, their citizens and residents, but oftentimes serve larger areas of, of rural and unincorporated and even in some cases sort of wilderness areas in the region. And, and it makes sense to call these out um, for that role and that they need to be thinking about becoming even more self-sufficient over time so that they have housing, employment, um, amenity um, opportunities for not only their residents but for the surrounding community. So that's, that's really sort of where that comes from. So we do have a motion and a second. Further discussion? And I understand that may not have satisfied your... Uh, not in favor of the Okay. Understanding that it doesn't satisfy your concern, we do have a motion and a second. So if there's no further discussion, I'll ask you to uh, raise your hand for the keeping 1.3 intact and eliminating 1.4. All those in favor? Opposed? Note that there's one opposed and two opposed. And abstentions? One abstention. I just yeah. want to add something. Please. You know, th this is a good thing because we are taking notes. Um, one of the things that's going to happen is you're going to go through these series of, of objectives and we're going to come back with narratives that, that to pair with that. And so when we hear things like that, we will make a mental note and think about how to introduce that concept um, into the actual narrative so that yeah. there, we get more than those seven words, like for instance. So. Councilmember Karis Green. I just want to say thank you for coming back. That assures me, <clears throat> that provides me some reassurance, so thank you. Commissioner Jones. Well, just point of clarification, that would have been a useful thing to know because that makes perfect sense to highlight that notion of rural town centers in the narrative. So would it be helpful for us to give staff direction when we feel like, uh, well, it doesn't need to be stated in the objective, but could you capture it in the narrative? Yes. Great. Okay, so for uh, outcome one, <clears throat> excuse me, we have changed uh, 1.1 to be encourage instead of promote, 1.2 preserve and leverage in lieu of embrace, 1.3 is remaining as is, 1.4 is stricken. Can I have a motion for approval of, of, of outcome one? Second? Second. Have a motion and a second discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions? And it carries unanimously. Outcome two. Um, regional objective 2.1. Open for discussion. Councilmember Cernanic. Uh, I know we have deferred the urban growth boundary discussion, um, but my understanding is it's somewhat malleable. Uh, and using the word contained to a malleable space um, 
seems a little contradictory. Um, so maybe you could expose a little bit of that. Uh, so it's actually the idea is that is that all urban development in this region will be captured within the urban growth boundary area. The sort of flexibility comes in terms of where that urban growth boundary and area is located, right? Each member government that has urban growth boundary associated with it can, can move it anywhere it chooses to, to move it in its, in its jurisdiction, but the idea is contain and capture 100% of what's classified as urban within that, that area. Thank you. Other discussion on 2.1? See, none can have a motion. Motion in a second. Uh, all those in favor of moving 2.1 forward? Oh, discussion, please. Mayor Pro Temole. I just, again, want to make sure the concept of uh, the flexibility of the urban growth boundary is captured in the discussion and that contain is a very, very strong word to me. Um, and it looks like we are dictating to people. And I, I just want to make sure that in the discussion of this that we include the, uh, the concept that this is a fluid boundary that will change. So thank you. Further discussion? I'm going to agree that I would be better served with unencouraged just because in the cities it's more defined. Some of the counties, it's the entire county. Just pick kind of where you want to put it. So I, it, it, the containing seems more restrictive to some than versus others in the way they do urban growth boundaries. So um, my thoughts. Commissioner Jones. Um, I appreciated the staff explanation of why we're using the word contain. And I think maybe um, Jackie's point about explaining that the actual drawing of the bound boundary is flexible and changes over time, but wherever we put it, we're trying to grow inside that. And it, with that explanation, then I think I can live with the word contain. The you know, it, it's good to to re remember historically that this is one of sort of the bread and butter pieces of Metro Vision since its early inception was to try to focus growth inward and be compact because every m metric that we measure from taxpayer dollars spent on infrastructure to air quality to water conservation improves if we are more intentional and thoughtful about that development pattern. Seeing no one else jumping up and down, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Two opposition, abstained. Zero. 2.1 moves forward. 2.2. Mayor Pro Tem Malay. Okay, maintain the urban growth boundary does not seem to be allowing for flexibility. So I can't live with that language. I can live with the other one if as long as we uh, maintain the concept I can, under, I can live with. But that to me seems like we're maintaining a specific boundary. And that isn't what we're doing. So I, I, I struggle with those words and I cannot support that language. Right, I, I, I mean, I, yeah. And, to, thank you. I mean, I, and I also don't understand why we, we're, you know, I find if we want to monitor it, but. Could, maybe we could have a staff explanation. I was thinking this is more the work of Dr. Cog to keep track of where it is. That's what maintain is. So they're the keepers of what, what the map is, monitoring how, where it is, as opposed to, um, I think objective 1.1, 2.1 was to Dr. Cog board. And 2.2 is to staff, but staff, could you explain? I think that's a, a really good way to characterize it. I don't know if there's a better word for maintain that doesn't elicit that, but the idea is they have to, it's not, it's more than monitoring it. They're, they have to keep track of it and bring it up for amendment and that kind of thing. So, so the way that I've, it's been explained to me is that the Dr. Cog staff's role is as an accountant, basically. Mayor Pro Tem Malay. 
I, I have a concern with putting staff's roles in our regional objectives. That does not seem consistent with what we're doing. So, uh, you know, the work of this body is not going to be encompassed in, in uh, the specific tasks of this body are not going to be encompassed in these regional objectives. So I, I don't understand why we're putting this objective in. I don't. I really don't. Well, and I'll add one amendment to sort of to the conversation Elise and I were having. Um, yes, in some ways, I, I see the sort of the division between 2.1 being the board and 2.2 being staff. But I think it's important to understand it's not just Dr. Cog's staff; it's your staff as well. Right. I mean, there is a lot of back and forth that has that happens in terms of us understanding where you are moving UGB around so that your neighbors understand where your UGB is is located. All those sorts of things. I, I get that it, it gets close to work program activity, but it is such a big driver of things that we do here that that's the reason it kind of got elevated. So better Mayor, word than maintain. I was going to say, Mayor Pro Tem Malay, if is there something that you would suggest for the floor to consider? Uh, unfortunately, my recommendation is to remove it because I, I don't think it belongs in the regional. I don't think it belongs. I think it is a task, not an objective. Commissioner I, Jones. I guess I was thinking that. Um, under maintain and monitor is where the whole Dr. Prague process of working with our communities to coming back, amending it when need be, is captured in 2.2. 2.1 talks about the idea of containing and having growth occur inside the UGB. And the objective two is about how it's a living dynamic thing, Jackie. So I think if you got rid of that, you would be getting rid of the the piece that talks about the operational flexibility in where that line is. Mayor Noon. What about identify and monitor? Because truly the board, it's not our, I mean, our, we have the final say what that boundary looks like. So then you're going to identify it, you're going to monitor what changes get made to it. So how do we feel about identify and monitor? Councilmember Rockman. I, that sounds like a reasonable alternative. I had another thought, which was something on the order of work with member communities to maintain and monitor, which then shows that it's not a unilateral thing done by the central organization. That's good, too. Yep. Yep. Would somebody like to uh, put a motion on the floor? So I'll, I'll, I'll move uh, that we change the language of oh. Regional Objective 2.2 to uh, work with member communities to maintain and monitor the urban growth boundary slash area. Council Member Brockett, it was just pointed out to me that you're not an actual member of MVIC, oh dear. so you can't make the motion. Uh, Mr. Mr. Graves. Mr. Chairman, I move that, Councilman, we restate the motion that I will make <laughs> on your behalf. Sure. Um, uh, I rec the uh, language I had in mind was uh, work with member communities to maintain and monitor the urban growth boundary area. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have a motion and a second on discussion. Uh, the executive director, I believe, has a comment. With all due respect, I think we need to try to keep these worded in a very uh, particular way. I, I'll rely on Jerry. He wants to speak on this, but we try to start each of these with a verb. We try to keep the structure very similar because that's going to be critical in how we are able to measure and monitor and give you back performance information. So I see where you're wanting to go. Um, I'm just suggesting that you continue to try to tweak this in such a way that you've got something that gets to um, um, Aaron's point, but yet in a in a framed in a different way, or it started with a, 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 a verb. Mayor Noon. As boring as they are. So as much as I like it, Lynn, hearing what you just said, if we kept the identify and monitor and then underneath it really is, we're going to work with member communities to do identify and monitor. That would be perfect to go in the narrative. Yes. So if it went in the narrative, because I, I really like capturing that, but if the identify and monitor and then we're going to work with or cooperate with or whatever other words go in the narrative. What, it, what does everyone think about that? Mr. Graves. I'm comfortable keeping or identify and monitor given that we retained to contain in the first one. So to me, that, that gives me the assurances required. So can we have an official motion? Okay, so <laughs> uh, there's currently a 
Yeah, I was going to say we have a motion. Is the issue. Do you want Would to you like to modify your motion, Mr. Graves? Okay, now I'm a bit confused in terms of where we are exactly. So I know the motion on the table, but I'm not sure what the new one is that's being proposed. There was no, yeah, we did. There was no second to that motion. So it yeah, dies. There, there was a second. Just vote it down. Sounds great. Call the question, or Mr. Chairman. Or we could just do a friendly amendment to. Let's just change. Now I just called the question, people. All right. All right. Second, you're calling. Second. Second to call. Second. Question has been called and seconded. So all those in favor of calling. All those in favor of calling the, of stopping the conversation and calling the question, please raise your hand. So the question has been called. All those in favor of the amendment as it was stated, please raise your hand. It dies for lack of vote. Mr. Graves, would you like to restate your motion? I'll ask for some uh, help from my peers here. What are we restating now as the proposed the amendment? The new motion is? Identify. Thank Regional you. Objective 2.2, identify and monitor the urban growth boundary area. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Just to note that we want to capture the work with communities piece in the narrative. Just right. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of changing it to be identify and monitor, please raise your hand. Opposed? One, one opposition abstained? Thank you very much. Regional objective 2.3. So can, can I interrupt for a moment? So just to understand my role here, I thought my community had appointed me to this committee, so uh, evidently not. So should I, can I not vote? Which, what, okay, so. So, <clears throat> seats on this committee are not um, to the jurisdiction, they are to the member. And your member, Suzanne Jones, um, is no longer on council, well, no longer on the committee. And so Boulder does not currently have a seat on this committee. Okay, great. You so are allowed to, to sit and participate in the conversation. Um, you just can't vote. Okay, or make motion. No, no. And to clarify let, that, I'll Let me point it. out, this is, this is the last meeting that yeah. those those rules are in place. The next meeting will not be an MVIC meeting again. It will be a work session and there will be different rules. Mayor Pro Tem Malay. But you are more than welcome to participate in the discussion. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. And the Council next Shockey. meeting is open to everyone. So Correct. all board members. And alternates. All right. On to regional objective two point three, please. Councilmember Diet. All right. Um, I, I do not like this one. Um, prioritize funding to serve urbanized areas. It seems like we are trying to um, maybe create a priority as, as opposed, I mean, to me, I'm, I'm all about highest and best use of assets, but to prioritize funding uh, seems to me like it's, it's uh, creating a goal or an objective that um, we can grab onto at tip land and um, maybe sort of leverage to, to do something with the tip scoring. And I, I don't, I just don't like it. Executive Director would like to speak yeah, I, for that. I just, I want to be sure that everyone understands what uh, urbanized area means. And clearly this needs to be spelled out in the narrative that um, anything within the urban growth boundary is considered urbanized under this um, under this statement so that that is the that that has been the the, the long-standing goal not you, to say that it can't be changed yeah. but the long-standing goal has been to keep um, uh, funding within that that urbanized area even within the even UGP. Parker yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I think, I think to me. The UGB. Well, I, I mean, I, I think to me, it, I, maybe a question would be is that what municipality um, or does any municipality in Dr. Cog have any um, non-urbanized areas that, that they are asking for funding for? So, so yes, I mean, as, 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 as Jennifer mentioned, this is about each, each community's um, urban growth boundary area, which is you know, the, the easy way to think about it is the places that you anticipate to have urban development in the next 25 or 30 years plus what's currently urban today. So 
this has been a long-standing outcome that really is about, okay, we want to maximize the impact of that investments that come through Dr. Coggin to focus on those high priority growth areas in the in local communities. So that's really kind of what the nexus is here. I have uh, Council Member Stolzman and then Council Member Sernanik, but I want to go to Mr. Stiegel first real quick. Yeah, if I, I mean, I'm just going to make a comment about this one in particular. It's written sort of in between an initiative to me and an objective, okay? If you think about it as a thing you can do, you could do it annually. One of the verbs you might consider would be increase because it tells you which direction is good. But you could use prioritize, but you'd want to explain that a little more. It does sound more like a task or an initiative. It's sounding a little bit. So that's the only comment I'd have. So in the queue I have uh, Stoltzman, Cernanic, Partridge, Teal. Uh, Councilmember Stoltzman. Thank you very much. In my community, we discuss this a lot because planners um, consider urban areas differently than just regular people do. And so we've had this discussion many, many times. So I think it's just very important, as Jennifer pointed out, that the narrative really explains what urbanized or urban areas mean uh, because it's not clear to everyone. Next, I have Mayor, um, Council Member Sernanik. Thank you. Um, I agree with Ashley uh, on this one um, and to recognize that the Metro Vision Plan is actually written for the RPO, uh, the Regional Planning Organization. So when we start talking about transportation dollars, this actually goes beyond some of that. It says to some extent whatever funding may come about uh, for the RPO and it really puts it in that kind of a context. So it is a little bit different than some and that's just the clarification I wanted to throw out. And if I'm wrong, um, Jennifer or Brad will let me know. Commissioner Partridge. Uh, the word prioritize bothers me also. I think it's a very prescriptive word rather than proscriptive to give you an idea of what, but so that word I think is very prescriptive. The other thing I see is that the counties I feel are a disadvantage here because what counties do is connect communities. They're urbanized communities. So I see the disadvantage for counties being able to apply because the priority is to urbanized areas, but it's the connector roads that bring communities together that are usually oftentimes unincorporated Oregon County. Uh, next, I have Councilmember Teal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, I'd like to, I mean, uh, I would speak in favor of what we heard from Commissioner Partridge. He, I, would, um, I would move that we change the language from prioritize funding to serve urbanized areas to prioritize funding to connect urbanized areas. Was that a formal motion, sounded like? Is there a second? The motion dies for lack of a second. Council Member Shakti. Um, I wonder why we don't say prioritize funding to serve areas within the urban growth boundary so that the public reading it knows what it means. Um, and then I'm interested in comments on the prioritize funding to serve or connect urbanized areas if people have thoughts on whether that makes sense or what the impact would be. Commissioner Jones. Well, I was going to, so it could be that the way Shakti has it worded is the most precise way and would help with understanding because I think that is the idea is to we want to focus in areas that are already urban, urbanized or are urbanizing, be they in the county or in the city. Um, and that's where you focus your resources first and then you grow out. You don't, you know, out into areas that aren't developed. That's not efficient. That's not a good way to lay infrastructure. That's the most costly way we could do that. And it sort of counter to planning. Um, I think implicit in that, if we worded it according to the way Shakti uh, said, we capture the idea of the con connecting existing communities. So I don't actually think we need to do that. Maybe that needs to be, you can call it out and clarify that in the narrative, but I think it's implicit. Council Member Dyack. So to, uh, to speak to Commissioner Partridge's concern about prioritize, I would offer um, to uh, switch that out with promote. Uh, maybe that would sort of um, 
speak to the same thing, but maybe soften a little bit? Mayor Pro Tem Malay. I actually would like to change, suggest, throw out there, increase funding to serve the urban growth boundary. I mean, we want to increase the funding, guys. And if, we're, how, if we can't prioritize the entire urban growth boundary, right? So what we're going to do is look for resources to increase the funding. So, um, you know, if we're going to prioritize the entire urban growth boundary, that's everything. So that doesn't make any sense. So increasing funding does make sense to me. Commissioner Jones. Well, I, I'm fine with the idea of trying to get more funding, but I guess I would say increase and prioritize. The whole point is we've drawn the urban growth boundary. We're trying to focus development inside that that includes cities and counties in that. We're going to maintain it, and we want to make sure that resources don't flow outside of it, but they flow into it. So that's a prioritization. I'm fine with saying, and we should increase the pot. But prioritization in this, in this way is talking about trying to send funding to our existing communities, all of our communities that are, you know, we're inside the UGB. So I guess I, w I would, I'm not sure if we have a motion on the table. Mm -mm. I would so make a motion to increase, to change uh, the objective 2.3 to say increase and priorities, prioritize funding to serve areas within this, the UGB slash A. I have a motion and a second. Discussion on the change. Mr. Thank, Graves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To me, this all comes down to how the executive director defined urbanized, right? And so I agree that it's, a, it's how it is that we're sort of funneling resources based on this urban growth boundary. So I support the motion. So I want to make sure that I captured it. I wrote increase and prioritize funding to serve areas within UGA, UGB. Okay, further discussion? All those in favor of this um, modification, please raise your hand. Opposed? Two in opposition, abstain? I would entertain a motion for uh, moving forward the regional objectives 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3 as modified. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of moving this forward, please raise your hand. Opposed? Mr. Graves, you had your hand up the whole time. Were you? <laughs> okay, thank you. So we have one in opposition uh, abstentions. All right, we've made it through seven out of 51. <laughs> No? Yeah. <laughs> Outcome number three, regional objective 3.1, discussion. Councilmember Stolzman. I move to accept uh, regional objective 3.1. We have a motion and a second to move forward 3.1 as is, discussion. Mayor Noon. Not that I oppose it, but it's pretty much just a restatement of the outcome. So I'm a little confused there. Accommodate a growing share of the reasons housing and employment in urban centers, but it's connected urban centers and multimodal corridors accommodate a growing share. Isn't it just the same thing flipped around? Yeah. So what am, what am I missing here? It's, it, to me, the objective is the outcome just flipped. So I wondered why it was there. Other discussion? Mayor Pro Tem No. Oh, I'm sorry. Council Member Stolzman. Yeah, I just want to speak to the motion. The reason why I made the motion so quickly was just because I think that this captures the essence um, of the outcome. Like you said, I think the other objectives in here are very specific, but they don't actually encompass the, the entire outcome like this does. I think they're very narrow, and I think this is exactly what we're trying to do with the outcome. But it is the outcome is my point. The objective is the outcome, and we could state that for all of them is my point. So if well, every one of them should say the same exact thing, I just don't think it's necessary because it is the outcome. 
So since it is staff recommended, can I ask Mr. Calvert, to, is, is there a comment on that? Uh, I think the, the main reason this exists is this has been a version of this objective has, has existed for a long time. Uh, but the main issue is so that you can connect it directly to a measure. Um, we, do, we do want to be able to have a measurement here, and those, those measurements are going to be really most directly linked to the objectives, and so that's why it exists in this format. And I, I understand uh, Mayor Noon's point that there's <laughs> that. Trust me, and imagine when there were 168 of these, what it was like. I mean, your variations on, on themes here for sure. Commissioner Jones. I, I hear both sides of this. I'm wondering if it would be helpful if we at least change some of the language. Um, when I read 3.1, I was thinking that we, rather than accommodate, we should say focus. The idea being action oriented is we're trying to get more growth near these, in, in these urban, seri urban centers and that it might be useful um, to state it in that way and really make it more of an action that local governments and others are, are trying to aspire to. Mayor Pro Tem Malay. I guess I'm, I'm going to speak against the motion because I, I could not agree with Mayor Noon's comments more and I, I, I just don't understand, you know, we haven't even determined what the measures are going to be yet, so to have staff say, well, we need an objective because we want to measure something just seems really out of order with what we're doing. This board is going to determine what the measures are going to be, and I, I you know, and we, we need staff's input to do that. I completely agree with that, but I have not heard a reason from staff to include this as an objective because there's a lot of things other than to say because we want to measure it. That, that just doesn't seem appropriate to me. Commissioner Jones. Maybe I would reframe how Stave's and staff said that. I think another sort of core value and operating principle that's been a part of Metro Vision for a long time has been the idea of urban centers as being focal points and hubs for development and places where you want to get more houses, more jobs, and, and then you can connect those connect to those. Um, so I think this really speaks to the notion, and I think Dr. Cog's gotten awards for this notion of organizing around urban center principles. It's considered a best practice. So when staff said they wanted something to measure, I think it, it's more recognition that we as the board have had this as a major tenant in Metro Vision for a long time. And assuming that that doesn't change, and obviously we, it is in our purview to do that, but it is a an organizing framework of this to, to use the urban centers. Council Member Stolzman. The, the last comment I'll make is that none of the other objectives actually, in my opinion, capture the idea of trying to get housing and employment in urban centers. And so I think that at least this concept is critically important to the, to the outcome. Mayor Pro Tem Malay. And I will just restate that if the outcome, we, are, we have an outcome to, to do such that, so why, why do we have to have an outcome? And if we don't have an objective, then let's identify an objective. Let's just not restate the outcome. And so I'm, I would be willing to ask staff to noodle on that a little bit and come back to us with something that, that does address that issue, because I do think it's an important issue. But this isn't it, in my opinion. So I, I will be voting against the motion. Councilmember Teal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, no, I, actually, I think Mayor Noon has it right. I mean, we're we're saying it's an it's a mobile auto automobile. I mean, we're just restating the outcome again. So let's stick with the process that we have agreed to. If we look at those objectives, guys, I know it doesn't use the exact same words, but we are capturing these are the objectives that make the outcome happen to promote public-private investment, prioritize investment in urban centers, invest in multimodal enhancements. Those three objectives make our outcome. So again, I kind of go back to let's keep the promises we made to each other. Let's stick with the process. Um, I think we could, I would vote against the motion and encourage us to actually eliminate objective uh, 3.1 just because it's, I think the mayor is 100% right. It's just restating the outcome. Mayor Atchison. It's a question for staff. Do we know how many Mike. Do we know how many declared urban centers there are in the metro area today? 104. Uh, Councilmember Cernanek, please. 
with this one, I'm, I don't have the words to suggest on this, but um, three two through three four are action items to support an end result that says we're we're looking to have more development jobs and residents uh, residential housing in urban centers and that's the density that will get us to the lesser sprawl that is part of this whole piece we've been talking about as far as historical significance uh, I don't know that 3 1 captures that but um, the measure in the end is have we achieved less sprawl uh, and higher density and have done that through uh, also being in a position to um, accommodate the, the population growth that we're going to be having. Uh, so I mean that's, th isn't that really what we're trying to, trying to get at here? And then uh, two through four are more action items to try and achieve that. So I, I don't have the words. Okay, in the queue I have uh, Shakti, Stiegel, and Jones. Councilmember Shakti. <laughs> Could we just measure the outcome or make some policy that wherever the outcome isn't captured by the objectives, we measure the outcome? So wh Mr. whoever can answer it. Uh, yeah, you can. I mean, if you think of the kind of measures we're going to come up with, we're going to have an outcome measure, but we'll have sort of activity or process measures too. So if I looked at 3-1, and I'm going to go back to the format of an objective as I write them, I would get it down to increase housing and employment in urban centers, period. That's all you need. Because if you'd say accommodate a growing share, it, you, you really are talking about increasing it. To, the measure will tell you, when you set the target for the measure, will tell you to what extent you want that to increase. Does that make sense? So the objective is not going to increase anything. You're going to define what that looks like through the measure and the target you set for them. So you could have an outcome measure longer term. They're harder to grab and there are longer periods of time. So think about improvement in air quality as an outcome measure. Over time, other things have happened before that. So, so yes is, is sort of. The, is, the, is objective 3.1 for some reason easier to measure than outcome 3? Uh, well, Brad said something earlier that you typically associate your, me your measures with your objectives. But if you looked at an outcome measure, if we had the ability to collect that information, we could measure the overall outcome. But what we're really looking at is some things that we can measure a little lower level, and that's increasing in housing, increasing employment. Does that but sound logical? I, I, I'm, I feel like there's a follow-up question. If we need to restate the outcome as an objective in order to have it measured, then I am definitely going to vote for it. Uh, but if we can be assured that it will be measured whether or not we have it as an objective, then my vote might be different. Okay. I would recommend you have an objective for at least one for every outcome, and you have more than that. So I would suggest that this objective, if 3-1 rewritten, will support the outcome. If you think about if you're going to get a growing share, what's the first thing you've got to do? You, start, you have to increase the housing and employment in the urban centers to actually have that happen. And that occurs over time. The outcome is the outcome measure, did we do it and to what extent? Does that make sense? Okay. But I, I think you can get it down to something fundamental. So in the queue I have Jones, Noon, Malay, and Teal. Commissioner Jones. So that's where I was going, either increase or encourage. Um, so I would like to make a friendly, does anybody have a preference, increase or encourage? So I would make a friendly amendment to the motion on the table that we reward Objective 3.1 to say increase housing and employment in urban centers. Second. That's acceptable. <laughs> no, I didn't hear it. Second. An acceptance of the friendly amendment. I said that's acceptable. So, so restate it for me if you would, please. Increase housing and employment in urban centers. Who was the second? Oh, okay. All right. 
So we have a friendly amendment that has been accepted by the original motion maker as well as the original second to change 3.1 to increase housing and employment in urban centers. I still had three people in the queue. Mayor Noon. I'm good with that. Mayor Pro Tem Malay. I'm good. Council Member Teal. I like the language. I'm going to vote no against it because I disagree with the principle. Okay. Other discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise their hand. Wait, wait. You have to vote on the amendment first, and then you come back to vote on the second. The friendly, the friendly, friendly amendment, amendment has to be voted first before you can vote on the motion. I, don't, I think that's when it's a substitute amendment. I think that's when it's a substitute amendment. A friendly amendment just has to be accepted by the motion maker in the second. If it's a substitute amendment, then it has to be taken first. So all those in favor of 3.1 change, please raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions? 3.1. 3.2. Uh, he didn't raise his hand. I thought there was, but he didn't raise his hand. Did, were you in opposition, Council Member? So Peele? I thought we voted. I voted yes to change 3.1, which I thought we was what you just said, Mr. Chairman. So now shouldn't we vote to accept 3.1? No. Let me. Let me. Yeah. Let me. If since. <laughs> si <laughs> let's let's go I, back. I let's, believe I am allowed to. Change my vote. So let's say so no. Let, let's go back and, and uh, I'm not a Roberts Rules expert, but as I understand, since it was a friendly amendment, the only two people that have to accept it are the motion maker, the original motion maker, and the second. It doesn't have to be voted on separately. If it were a substitute uh, motion, then it would have to take the process that you explained. So knowing that, uh, I'm assuming you want to change your vote to no. Mr. Chairman, let the record reflect I voted no. Thank you. All right, regional objective 3.2. And before we get on to this real quick, I want to do a time check. We've got 45 minutes until 6, and I have uh, about 5 or maybe 10 minutes of miscellaneous matters that we need to chat about prior to that, so we've got about 35 minutes. Um, regional objective 3.2. If there's no discussion, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Malay. Uh, my only comment would be we should change promote to increase uh, public and private investment and partnerships in urban centers. That for would be a motion. For consistency. Second. So there's a motion and a second to change the word promote to be increase, to be consistent with 3.1. I said increase. I'm fine with increasing it. Discussion? Don't, don't call it. Let's just vote. Just, yeah. Then we have to vote on calling. So the question has been called. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. Opposed? One opposed to calling the question. It moves forward. So the question is called. All those in favor of changing increase uh, from promote to increase, please raise your hand. Opposed? One in opposition, and it carries. Regional objective 3.3. Mayor Noon. Um, I'm going to have to kind of um, be against this one completely just because it's prioritized investment in urban centers served by transit because communities often do not control whether they're served by transit or not. And so if we're going to prioritize funds to something they have no control about, I really think that's then you, they're just going to stop doing urban centers in those areas. So if we really want urban centers, um, it, it, you might want to say encourage transit to serve urban centers, but we're going to be encouraging RTD. We're not going to encourage us as communities. So I would be voting against object, uh, um, regional objective 3.3 for those reasons. Councilmember Teal. I join uh, Mayor Noon in her objection uh, to this objective. Again, it divides those of us who are in communities that are not served by transit from those who are. It is a divisive objective. Councilmember Stolzman. 
I, I think Mayor Noon had an excellent suggestion to change it to say increase transit, in, increase transit to urban centers. Increase transit service to urban centers. I think that that's a great, a great way to frame this. Councilmember Pfeiffer. And I also agree. I mean, we have urban centers that have no transit at all, anywhere remotely close. So um, I would be uh, support in the uh, suggested objective. Councilmember Cernanek. Can we add um, not just transit service, but transit utilization? so that uh, it actually becomes economically viable or at least uh, it requires less subsidy I'll put it that way and uh, so I offer that as a I guess consideration I'd, out there I would want you to clarify utilization are you talking about ridership yes okay transit use okay. ridership that if, uh, we, that if we just have service it doesn't necessarily get us to where we want the objective but, yep. but we want to go a step further to actually have folks use the transit service. Council Member Thiel. Well, I, I think uh, Ashley's a genius. I think the, her uh, suggestion to um, you know increase, I think that's excellent. And actually, I, I think Phil's got a great suggestion too. Because, yeah, I mean that's a, you know that's by doing it uh, transit use. You're not just talking expanding it to communities like mine, communities that are unserved, but really addressing communities that are, you know, not utilizing it. That may be in the very core of the urban area. So uh, I support, uh, um, I don't know if those were formal amendments, but I would definitely support formal amendments as made by uh, Ashley and Phil. You can, you can may, include them in a, in a may, motion. May, yeah. Maybe. Mayor Noon was next, I believe. All right. I'm going to make a motion that Objective 3.3 read increase transit service and ridership service, in, no, increase transit service and ridership in urban centers. I think it's two. Two. Yeah. Increase transit service to. Two. And, and ridership within. Within, yeah. Word. Wordsmith that just a little bit, but. Well, I think that we want to encourage transit within the urban centers too. Within and to. To and within. Yeah. Or do we want to do that throughout the whole region? Not. Don't we don't don't want to do it through the whole region? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, Bob, I don't know if I can speak yet, but I the idea is to we can't have unfortunately transit everywhere because res we're resource limited. So to increase it. I think within and to urban centers makes sense because it gets at the corridor piece that I think Roger and others have talked about, but also gets at the urban center piece. I, I guess a comment I would have is the ridership piece of it. I mean, when we're talking about things that are or are not within our control, um, I can tell you a specific example in my part of Aurora where the uh, bus service has decreased because ridership has decreased serving a certain area. So again, the the utilization or the ridership, we have no control over that. And we don't even have control of the measurement of it. That's RTD's purview. So that's my comment. Mayor Protomoli. Oh. Well, uh, to your point, uh, we don't have anything to do with housing either. So, uh, I, you know, if we're... Uh, I mean, if we're going to go along with that line of thinking, then I want, I want all the housing stuff out of here, too, because I thought this document was supposed to be our regional vision and things we can move. So to me, if we're going to be measuring housing, which we have no control over, then we certainly should be measuring ridership. So I accidentally skipped over Mayor Pro Tem Pfeiffer, and then I have Jones and uh, Mr. Graves. Well, I don't think we need to rely on RTD to be the answer because uh, we're not. And when we, we're looking at circulator buses, our neighbors to the south, the Golden, does something similar. I would think that that would qualify as transit where I'm not getting support from RTD. We're solving our own issues, and we've worked closely with Golden to do something similar. So I want to make sure we think of this more broadly than relying all on RTD to solve our problems because CDOT has stepped up to the plate with uh, the busting and a few others. 
So let's just look a little bit broader when we say transit. That in the narrative, we're not calling out RTD to solve it. Because, like I said, we'll, we'll solve our own problems sometimes. Commissioner Jones. Well, I totally agree, and I would add to that point. Places like Netherland have taken upon themselves to do things to increase ridership, like provide everybody with a pass in town. They've packed themselves to do that. So there are mechanisms for communities to increase ridership that, that they do themselves. Mr. Graves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before we pursue an amendment here, I was just going to ask staff if they could give us 30 seconds on the background for this to see uh, kind of what their thoughts were around the word choice. Uh, going back to the original, I assume. Uh, so that is actually kind of, that goes back to MetroVision 2035, the existing board adopted plan. Um, there's a series of, of policies associated with urban centers and, and, and it does suggest that urban centers should be um, priority for investment overall and then a sub priority within that would be urban centers served by transit. So this is in many ways a carryover. Um, so obviously it's your purview to decide whether that still makes sense to, to keep it in or not. Mr. Graves. For that reason, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to stick with the language as it's presented by staff. Commissioner Partridge. When you look at the objective, we talk about multimodal corridors. So why are we focusing just on transit? Why are we not focused on a more of a multimodal approach when we start talking about connecting urban centers? Mr. Or investing Eagle. in urban centers. Did you have your hand up earlier? Okay. So, so let me uh, kind of recap where I think we are, and correct me if I'm wrong. There was a motion, but not a second, to change the language to increase transit service to and ridership within urban centers. I believe that was the motion. Mr. Chairman, I would be happy to add a second. So we have a motion and a second. I want to make sure who was the motion maker. Was can you verify that I have that right? And it may not be within, it might be readership to, ridership to urban centers. Because okay. that makes it sound like we're just riding with inside the urban center. Okay. So it might be ridership, transit service to, and ridership to urban centers. And ridership to urban centers. So, um, So I know that there's been some suggestions of some other language, but since we had the motion on the floor and not a second, I wanted to recap that. We now have a motion and a second. Mr. Stiegel. I'm just going to comment. On the ridership, we know that RTD has that number, so it could serve as a measure. I mean, that's a key one. And then what Elise described were the initiatives that Nederland took on to increase the ridership. So as you connect all these dots, that's, that's what I'm hearing. So if you think of it along those lines, uh, I mean, increased transit service to and ridership to urban centers fits the model of the objective. It, it, it's a little, you know, it's awkward, but yeah, it's a little awkward. I dropped one of the twos, by the way. Yeah. I think we need both twos, so. You don't need them both, but yeah, it's a little awkward, but it, it, it fits that model. Mayor Pro Tem Pfeiffer. I wouldn't use the word and, maybe or. Well, because I'm thinking of uh, Castle Rock, Netherlands, who might not have the service, but they might, might be able to participate uh, in encouraging ridership and other tools. Um, I, I think that you're asking for two, two results. You're asking for the transit service and the ridership. Maybe you uh, develop another program or use the EcoPass and pass it out to everybody. So I, I just think the word or is probably better than and. Yeah, so it would read increased transit service or ridership to urban centers or to and from and urban centers. Isn't it and or? I have Council Member Teal. Uh, yeah, and or is fine. Yeah. You know, um, if we go with an or there, it would be uh, increased transit service, uh, uh, increased transit service or ridership, then you'd want to get within urban centers again. Because the idea, and it was something I tried to express, if you're increasing that ridership where it's already at, we probably want that within back there as opposed to the two. Um, I, uh, I was going to speak in favor of the motion or the, the language as was. 
um, increased transit service and to our ridership within and to urban centers. I mean, I think that's, a, that's, that's about as uh, inclusive as you can get. So really, this addresses my concerns that I originally mentioned with Objective 3.3. I mean, this speaks to the people of Castle Rock, and this is inclusive of the people of Castle Rock, as well as everyone from with the region. So I think this is a great objective right now. So uh, next is Council Member Shakti. So I just have to admit I spaced out for a second, and I heard Anthony say that um, based on what staff said, there was a reason not to support this, and I would appreciate a restatement of that so I understand. Yeah. Staff said that this was a carryover, right? So it's been part of the, the sort of linear discussion leading up to this point. And I, I'm just concerned about losing the spirit of the language by working through this amendment. So that was my concern. I'm, I'm not really opposed to the amendment that you guys are putting forward. I'm just concerned about the intent of the existing language based on this carryover. So I would like to ask, because there's been several attempts to change the wording a little bit here or there. Um, so Mayor Noon, if you wouldn't mind, uh, even if it's a modification of your original motion, stating what your motion is, please. Okay, objective 3.3 .3 to read, increase transit service and or ridership within and to urban centers. And then the second was by. The second was Council Member Teal. Teal, and you agree with those words? I do. So we have a motion and a second on what we understand the language to be, Commissioner Jones. Um, overlooking for a moment Anthony's concern, and I think we are changing the intent somewhat by this. It, it's an equally laudable objective, so I'm going to support it, but we are changing the intent. I just want to, we don't need to do and or. We didn't do increase housing and or employment in urban centers. We're saying if, if the objective is these are two good things that we want to increase. It's not saying you can only be good if you have both. It's, so I think we're, this isn't tip criteria. This is, we're trying to increase transit and ridership. Those are two good things that go hand in hand. So I just, it's starting to, to read rather awkwardly, and I don't think we need to have and or written throughout this document. So I just wanna just pause for a second and see, just think that through before we vote on this. I'm not seeing further discussion. Uh, Mayor Noon. I can live with that since it was my motion. I'm fine with an and. So modifying it to be and instead of and or. And the second? Uh, I agree to it. Council Member Stolzman, it looked like you had something. Um. I just wanted to sort of tack on to what Commissioner Jones just said. I think this is a good objective as we've rewritten it, and I think we should still come back and address uh, Mr. Graves' comment because I think this is very good, and I think that that also has bearing. Further discussion? So on the motion and the second, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? None? and abstentions. Thank you. Objective 3.4. Open for discussion. Mayor Pro Tem Malay. Just, uh, can we explain the corridors are the multimodal corridors that have been defined in the document? Is that what we mean? I mean I invest in multimodal enhancement along corridors. I just, is that, is that word court or clear to folks? Yeah, yes, but, they, but they're, they're not defined anywhere. There, there is no list of these corridors. So my concern is I, I could call a park in my community a corridor, and what does that mean? So I, I do think there's got to be some sense of invest in multimodal enhance to, to Commissioner Partridge's point either uh, before invest in multimodal enhancements along is it urban corridors or or within urban centers or change, but 
Okay, I have uh, I have Teal, Dyack, and Jones. Councilmember Teal. So actually, I think the Mayor Pro Tem is really onto something. I don't know though that that must. I don't know that we have to wrestle with it here as an objective, so much as that becomes a performance measure uh, to define what those corridors are. So I mean that's not really. Um, something we have to address here in the objective, but that would rather be uh, a note that staff takes that we have to define as a performance measure and target of establishing, formally establishing what those corridors are. I kind of like it. I like the objective, but Jackie's 100% right. If we don't have those corridors defined, it's a bogus objective. So I would offer that it has to be a note for staff to define those corridors as a part of our performance measure and targets. Um, I personally think it should be defined as 225. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I-25 just has the two numbers on it. So uh, I have uh, Council Member Dyack, please. Um, I'm, I'm going to further uh, Council Member Teal. I think, you know, to me, much like other, um, other terms in this document, we do define what corridors are. I think we can um, use, we can define what a corridor is um, down in, in this not objective area and uh, call it good. Commissioner Jones. So I was going to move that we approve Objective 3.4, invest in multimodal enhancements along transportation corridors. Just to, it's not your park. Um, I, but the point is, if you remember prior discussions, we, we focus on urban centers, but we say, well, wait a minute, there's transportation corridor, corridors, I think you brought that up, that connect these places. Those are also places where we want to enhance transportation investment, not just the urban centers. So I think this is consistent. I don't know, I, I think, I feel comfortable that we know what corridors are. I don't know that we have to draw them all on the map. Um, I think it's, and it, you know, it connects back to the outcome. So that's my motion. Second. Oh, we have a motion and a second to, and let me make sure, invest in multimodal, multimodal enhancements along transportation corridors. Discussion. Mayor Pro Tem Pfeiffer. So on the outcome, it, it calls out multimodal corridors. And I know we talk about transport, uh, transit corridors. Um, I'm just, then I'm confused on what it means in the outcome then. Because then you need to scratch multimodal out of, out of the outcome and change it to transportation corridors or transit corridors. Well, now I need to point out that this have, was recommended by MVIC and already approved by the board the the outcomes so we can't well change that without taking it back to the board so then we're investing in multimodal enhancements on uh w transit corridors only not multimodal corridors then 225 will be one of them right because that's what that out at least for me the objective 3.4 is saying transit and yet the outcome is talking multimodal so I would, I don't know, I just think it. I, I didn't say transit, just to be clear. I said transportation. Oh, transportation. So, and it's not my turn to speak. I, don't I just know. wanted to clarify. Yeah. I just want to put it out there. I was a little confused. Commissioner Jones. So outcome is what we want. That's our vision, that ultimately we want these connected urban centers and we want those transportation corridors to be multimodal. The objective is that we have to invest in those multimodal enhancements. So they fit together nicely. Um, I put in transportation so that Jackie didn't have to worry about her park. I don't know that it's an, it's 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 uh, belts and suspenders, but it, it still relates directly back to the, the aspiring vision that we have for our corridors that they be multimodal. Councilmember Teal. As much as I enjoy words like aspiring vision and everything, I actually I, you know the commissioner has it right. You know, um, objective 3.4 makes that multimodal corridor occur. When we add the multimodal enhancements to the transportation corridor, it makes it a multimodal corridor. So, no, I think the commissioner's right. It's, uh, it, it is supportive. That objective is supportive of making the outcome. 
So I'm cool with it. I think it's, I think it's great. I think the addition of the transportation corridors is is a good way to help define that a little better. And besides, that way it's I-25, it's 225. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's 36, but maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> see, see, we don't have a highway, so thank you for everyone to clarify that. <laughs> you know, I needed that. Is an I-70 sort of close? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Malay. I just want to point out, I, Mayor Pro Tem Pfeiffer made a very good point regarding these multimodal corridors, and I realize it is adopted language by the board, but if you read outcome three on this sheet that was distributed, there is no reference whatsoever to multimodal corridors in the uh, narrative associated with that, and I just think... Um, I don't know how I feel about that, guys. <laughs> and it was adopted by us, I understand that, but that... I, I have nothing to say other than I think we should make, that's why the language is important as we go through this, because to me, outcome three probably isn't as good as it could be. And the narrative, again, does not address corridors whatsoever. It speaks strictly to urban centers. Councilmember Shakti. I think it's good that we don't have like a list of specific places. It's just a concept that's... Um, it's not I guess I feel like we kind of know what it means. But, it, excuse me, my only point was, guys, it is not even, the word multimodal corridor is not included in the narrative whatsoever in outcome three, and what it says speaks only to centers. It talks about urban centers. That's my point, not that multimodal corridors are bad. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just. A, com a comment from the executive director? Yeah, I, I'd have to go back and listen to the minutes, but. Um, on, on this one, but it, it, I, I think that by the narrative for three, in the second sentence, when it talks about they are transit, pedestrian, bicycle friendly, I think that's what you were trying to say. In fact, there was a discussion about the definition of multimodal, which was <laughs> determined to be more than one mode. <laughs> so I, I just... I, I don't know if it's problematic for you or not. I, I... Well, I, I, and all I'm suggesting is that I know this has been painful for all of us tonight, but I do think there is value in actually going through this and spending time discussing it because I don't really think outcome three, as much time as we did spend on it and with the narrative, the whole multimodal corridor concept is abandoned. It, 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 whether it, this is what it was supposed to mean or not, it's not what it says. Let's let the executive director. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I, and I just want to point out that the purpose of a narrative is to explain what the words preceding it mean. So we talked about connected centers and multimodal corridors, and, and those, those words there that aren't in bold are, are intended to describe that. So maybe you didn't describe it the way you want to. Just trying to make sure that you understand that the narrative isn't supposed to necessarily be a repeat. It's, it's trying to, to clarify what those preceding words actually mean. Commissioner Jones. I was uh, point well taken. We need to do good work here, um, but I think of all of the words in this document, the narrative are the least uh, directive. We have it in the outcome. The key is to get it in the objectives right, and in in the initiative, so that those are where the action will take place. So good catch. But um, let's go back to the motion on the table. How do people feel about invest in multimodal enhancements along transportation corridors? So we have a, you didn't change with your original motion. So the motion and second is on the floor. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions? So 3.4, if I could have a motion for all of outcome three, objective 3.1, point two, point three, point two, point three, and point four. Commissioner Jones. I will make that motion, but I wanted to add, um, a, a, a request of staff if people agree that um, I would like staff to report back on whether or not we lost any important meaning in our amendment to uh, objective 3.3 that we need to take in under advisement to consider an addition at our next meeting. Uh, so I would like staff to report back on that to, and I would like to move that we go ahead and approve the four outcomes as amended 
tonight, but also hear back from the staff at the next meeting. A second? Let, let me get a, let me see if there's a second first. Okay. Okay. Council Member Teal. Um, fine with uh, adopting the, th the four. No, I, I, would, I would not be supportive of having staff come back and taking a, another look at 3.3. .3. Again, 3.3 .3, as written is divisive. It divides our region between the haves and the have nots. We crafted a great concept here that is inclusive. Let's not direct staff to go back and do it. Let's stick with what we got. Let's follow the plan. Again, let's keep the promises we've been making to each other with, by using this methodology and let's move along. I want to ask for a clarification if I could. Uh, Commissioner Jones, were you suggesting that staff review 3.3 .3 or outcome 3? Okay, thank you. Mr. Graves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I support Commissioner Jones's uh, recommendation. Uh, again, I, I supported uh, the amended 3.3 uh, with the understanding that we might come back and revisit this issue since the intent is changed here. And again, I do think that there's this continuation of narrative that we are skipping. I was looking at the wording for both the amendment and the original language. And for the amendment, I think that a lot of this touches on programming. So when we look at trying to increase ridership, right? I recognize that there is a lot of programming associated with mobilizing people, educating them about routes, and getting them butts in seats, if you will, if I can speak frankly, right? But in the original 3.3, uh, prioritizing investment in urban centers served by transit, that really speaks to infrastructure, and it also ties together all these themes, right? The, the urban growth boundary, right? Trying to push density and the connectivity of all those pieces, and then rewarding that behavior. And so I, I, I am concerned about a departure from the intent, and I would like to see staff uh, re-examine this. Thank you. So let me recap real quick. We have a motion and a second, and we got into this discussion. Uh, I would like for staff to comment because, um, as I understand it, um, any board member, or in this case, MVIC member, can request staff to do some additional um, research on a particular item, and I don't believe it takes formal action of this board to do that. I, I, any one of the board members can ask staff to spend a little more time on something, and I just want to have somebody verify that for me. I think what's being requested would take a very small amount of time it's just basically looking at what was there before and what's looking at there now and giving you an opinion so um, that wouldn't that wouldn't be a problem for us to us to follow through on that so I guess my point is that I don't know that it takes any formal action by this board uh, just an individual board member has requested that a little further work be done on that and I think that's sufficient um, so the, there's a motion and a second any further discussion all those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions. There was uh, Mayor Eric, excuse me, Council Member Cernanek, when did you have your hand raised? Voted for. Voted for, thank you. All right, so uh, the bad news is we didn't get through 51 items. The good news is that because I don't think we're going to get through. Uh, seven objectives in ten minutes. Um, <laughs> I will keep the same offer for next month. How about that? <laughs> yeah, with the whole board. So <laughs> I, I, the whole board. <laughs> I, I do want to uh, point out a couple of things. First, um, to staff, that I would like, since uh, Mr. Hyde did make his um, his suggestions, I don't want to lose that on 4.1, he's suggesting the transportation word be added. And on 10.1, he suggested the active transportation option be added between increase and convenient. So I don't want to lose those two things. Um, a couple of other things real quick. In front of you, you have the uh, Dr. Cog um, annual dinner. And I, I wanted to point out that there is a member government table for six hundred dollars so i would encourage board members to encourage their staff to sign up for a table as a member of government um, secondly 
We have Preparing Colorado for a Resilient Future Idea Exchange on February 24th. I encourage you to take a look and uh, plan to participate if that's something that you want to participate in. Then the other thing I wanted to chat about briefly is it's been mentioned a couple of times, but uh, I want to make sure that we're all clear on the change of structure of this, this committee. So this is the last official MVIC meeting, and the next time we meet, it will be as a, um, not a study session, work session. session. work session, thank you. Boy, I, I keep, we all have that problem. I know. So during the work session, one thing that um, one thing that's definitely different about it is that although anybody can attend MVIC and is encouraged to in attend MVIC, no, I'm, I'm talking about the current one, um, you know, only certain people can actually vote and participate. With the work session, what we're trying to accomplish is getting rid of Groundhog Day, which was yesterday, so we can get rid of it. Um, and, and having the same conversation at the board level that we already had at MVIC. So by one of the ways that we're doing that is, is telling everybody, this will be your opportunity. You do need to attend because when you get to the board meeting, if there has already been discussion on a particular topic, topic and direction given, we're not gonna rehash it again. And the board chair will uh, be in charge of making sure that we're not having that Groundhog Day atmosphere of rehashing what we've already talked about. So that's one of the purposes. I wanted to ask the executive director if she had any further comment on this structure and what it, what it looks like going forward. Um, just a few things. Uh, the first meeting, is, the, the time uh, and place uh, is exactly the same as it is for MVIC. It's the first Monday of the month. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> Wednesday. God. It's been a long week. Um, the first Wednesday uh, of the month from four to six here in this room um, at a board meeting when uh, the board actually discussed this concept and agreed to it. Uh, they asked that staff look into um, providing a, a way for members to um, participate in the meetings remotely. Um, we will have instructions for that along with um, uh, with your first agenda, but basically we're going to be using um, uh, the GoToMeeting uh, application. I'm sure that most of you, if not all of you, are familiar with how that works. But if you're not, you'll be able to hear the conversation. You'll be able to see the presentations. Um, pardon? Uh, oh. Um, you, um, you won't, however, be able to see um, the people who are speaking. Uh, you'll be able to uh, electronically raise your hand and be recognized uh, by the chair in order to speak at meetings. Um, there will be uh, log-on information that's provided with the meeting agenda. Again, if you've never participated in a go-to meeting, um, uh, meeting, there will be information about um, downloading the application to your uh, computer. There's no charge for that. Um, there has been some discussion, but no uh, formal action by either the board or the board's uh, committee on structure and governance related to um, when it's appropriate to access the meeting remotely. Um, but I think that um, most of the comments I've heard have been that, you know, be it uh, because of traffic, your schedule, um, weather, those are the times that are most appropriate to use that. It's certainly beneficial to be here and be part of the discussion whenever you can be, but the board understands, especially because of the time and other circumstances, there are uh, reasons to uh, need to attend remotely. Um, similar to MVIC, uh, the work session will be those topics that you hear. You won't hear everything that's going to be on the board at the work session, but you will be hearing those things that are considered to be complicated or where uh, staff or the officers who have set the agenda are aware that there's controversy. Those things are not routine for the organization. Um, so that, that's kind of what you can, um, uh, you can expect. Um, <laughs> if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them right now. Yes, Mr. Sinanik. 
Yes, I, I heard that um, the chair of this group, uh, Council Member Roth, is actually going to come to the next meeting and there will be an official retiring of the MVIC designation and he'll be playing taps. <laughs> well, in, On in, what? <laughs> in, uh, so one of the things, as I understand, that changed with this is that the work session will not be run by the secretary, it will be run by the vice chair. That's so why you're playing the tap. Yeah, so, so, so I don't get out of running the meeting, it's just a different meeting format. <laughs> yes? And uh, what's the expected frequency of the work sessions? Uh, well, based on today's uh, progress, <laughs> <laughs> I think that you can consider it to be monthly for a little while. Um, uh, once we get through MetroVision, um, Hopefully it won't be monthly. That's certainly the desire of um, the Structure and Governance group that has uh, put the recommendation together, and staff wouldn't mind that either. So um, I'm guessing maybe every other month. It really just depends on what's coming up and um, um, what, um, what seems to be controversial and, and that sort of thing. It's kind of hard to tell, but hopefully it will not be every month once we get through MetroVision. When you said frequency, I was going to say 98.3, but um, <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Malay. And I just want to add on to that. I think MetroVision is going to require that we are participating monthly until this document is put to bed. And I think the board workshop is moving to the fall, and part of that will be kind of designing the, ne the year. And I think probably in the fall of every year we'll have a better idea Idea of what we're trying to get accomplished and what the meetings are going to be so so we should you'll get more of a sense of that but for now we're here <laughs> yes I just want to acknowledge your facilitation of this meeting um, I, I personally feel like it was well done and I just think you need that and I would like to provide that acknowledgement well, thank you very much <laughs> and on that note, at 5.56, we are adjourned. And if you need a parking validation tag, please come and see me.